All right, guys, this is LP uh, from s and Service and Repair. And I just want to talk to you about mindset and how my mindset has changed and transitioned over this past uh, about a year and a half for me being in the appliance repair industry. Starting out, I know a lot of people don't understand the, the money you, sh you can make in appliance repair. And also, a lot of times people, they don't understand or they don't believe it's true. You know, you hear somebody on the internet tell you about appliance repair and uh, saying that you can easily make six figures. You can support your wife and uh, all your, you know, your wife and family if you so have one, or you can run it up as a single man. And uh, I'm here to tell you that your mindset has to change. When I started out with the appliance repair business, I started out thinking that $85 an hour was the standard rate that I would receive, and that was it. Now, mind you, I make about $37 an hour at my corporate job, um, and I've had that for the last 18 years. So, $35, $37 to $85, that's a big jump. And, uh, it was a good deal, you know, I started making that money. You know, it was slow at first, and then it gradually picked up uh, with some of the advertising and marketing that I uh, put behind it. And, um, you know, everybody results are different because I had that job and I had money. I could afford to pay for a home advisor and Angie's List or whatnot, those lead generation magnets. And, uh, as another conversation for another day between the the way things are going now with the uh, pro connect and the home advisor route or thumbtack uh, the two different animals uh, uh just the mindset of going from that that 37 35 dollars an hour to the 85 wasn't really a big jump for me because the money wasn't consistent. The $37 an hour is consistent from the time I clock in to the time I leave, I can calculate my money. You know, the, the $85 an hour is, okay, that's the service call fee, and I gotta make sure that I price appropriately to make the money on the back end. And that was the biggest hurdle that I had starting out because I didn't price accordingly. I priced at $85 an hour. And so when I would get in these home advisor jobs, I was, um, and even with the warranty companies, I was doing the same exact thing. I wasn't pricing accordingly. So I go do a job, it take me an hour and a half. So I put in uh, 1.5 hours and then I was buying the parts for the warranty companies. Man, I wasn't making no bread. You know, I was trying to do the, you know, and uh, I was wearing myself out. I was getting a lot of great reviews on Home Advisor and Angie's List, like running it up really quickly because I was charging, you know, just bottom of the barrel rates doing really great quality work. You know, I pride myself on my word and my work and you know, coming from a trucking background, trucking manufacturer background, you know, I, I want I always want to do a good job, and I was doing that, but I wasn't seeing any profits. So, hence, that's why I tell you to get the book Profit First. Listen to the audio book or read it. After you do that, you'll understand putting yourself first. I'll, I'll you'll also understand that there's a blueprint to all these businesses, and they tell you to follow them. And when you start deviating like I did, I deviated a little bit over here, deviated a little bit over here. You mess yourself around and you start spinning your wheels and you start doing things to make you second guess why you're doing this. You know, whether it's for the quality of life or for freedom or whatever it is, you'll start second guessing yourself and say, man, I'm better off at this job, especially if it pays well. So, what did I do? First thing I did, and then now this went on. 
I did not get the the appliance blue book for a whole year and a half. You know, and that 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 is really going to set you back. If you do COD calls, the first time you take a COD call, you need to have the appliance blue book before you even book that call. You need to understand that people are paying you for your knowledge, for your special your specialty. I mean, uh, expertise. This is a specialized field. Everybody can't do it. So you need to understand that you need to buy the appliance blue book before before you get your first COD call. And if you can't afford the appliance blue book, you can't afford to take a COD call. It's that simple. Now, it wasn't that I couldn't afford it. I just I got on a blueprint. I followed the blueprint without implementing the next step in the blueprint. That's my fault. I can't blame anybody for my mistakes. I did that with full knowledge that, hey, I probably should get this book. But I tried a couple times. They were having some updates and on the website and I couldn't figure it out. I was like, ah, forget it. You know, and that's a problem with a lot of people, including myself. If you tr if I try a couple of times and, you know, like it doesn't seem to work the way I think it should work, then I'm like, man, forget it. I'm done. I'm that way with people. If I try to talk to somebody, have a conversation with them, and they brush me off a couple times, they ain't never got to worry about me in their life. You know, because I'm one of those type of people that I hold a grudge to just about the day I die. That's not good. It's not good for your health. It's not good for anything. But I am that type of person. So if you do me something, you already know you don't need to talk to me no more because we pretty well done. But, I, I mean, I, I just... I was like, well, I can't get it. I'm tried. I sent an email and um, I let it go. Fast forward about six months. Man, I'm really, really spinning my wheels. I'm really not making that much money. I'm, I'm making money to keep everything afloat, but I'm not making money. So I'm doing a lot of jobs, but I'm really not bringing in what I should be bringing in. And it's not until I said, forget it. <laughs> I'm gonna figure out how to get this appliance blue book. Somebody gonna let me buy this thing. But I know I needed to get the book and I did. And it just blew my mind. It changed my whole outlook on everything because coming from a trucking background and before that I was in an automotive background, flag hours. Now, Working off of flag hours, they give you a certain amount of time to do a job. And if you do it faster than that, that's great. Then you just increase your pay rate per hour because you can do more jobs in your workday uh, and get paid more money by still doing the same job. Uh, if you don't know what flag hours are or not for me with the concept, just Google it. So when I got the appliance blue book, the flag hours came into my head and the, the wheels started turning for me. And it helped me to understand that I can make more than $85 an hour. I can make more off of these parts that I'm charging. So it gave me a lot of motivation and it also became my online go-to resource for helping me figure out what uh, parts normally tear up or break on an appliance because it gave you a percentage of how much that part is used or how many times somebody has used it or it breaks so with that that gave me inside an inside track okay as i'm going through diagnosing before i get there i can uh make my game plan and okay this on the schematic okay this goes with this this goes with this this breaks or tires up or goes out, has a failure this many times. So I could kind of game plan ahead of time with it, you know, with that information. 
So that helped me and that helped change the way I looked at things and made me made me see and feel better about the appliance repair field as far as the money that I could be making. So that was a great uh, leap in my mind. You know, at, these things have to start in your mind before they can hit your bank account. They have to start in your mind. And that that book or that app, because I have the uh, online appliance blue book, that web app helped me to see that I can make so much more money and not have to turn as many jobs. I could kind of start picking and choosing the jobs that I wanted and I could turn down the jobs that I didn't want. And that was a great revelation for me. That helped me so much. So now I'm doing jobs, I'm making more money and uh, things are looking, looking good. But I still was stuck with warranty work because I, I did not know how to translate that into charging the warranty companies because we already had set about a rate that I was bound to. And also, I just didn't know. I didn't know anyone because I don't really talk to anybody for as that's in the business how they went about charging them and making money, making money to be profitable. Instead of running all these warranty calls. So my next big revelation was when I booked a consult with Miss Ward. Now I'm not going to give you the game because I paid for that game. And if you want that game, you can book a consult with Miss Ward uh, because that's her game that she's perfected. And it's not game. It's just, you know, way of going out and getting paid for what you're worth with the warranty companies. And it really, really helped me. I let go of Amazon. I let go of warranty tech. You know, and uh, a warrant tech, they change names so much to get bought out. But at any rate, I only work with uh, one warranty company now, and uh, I do COD. I, I let go of Angie's List. I was paying a set rate, and I'll tell you, I was paying $300 a month for those leads that I was, fi was fighting for. And a lot of times those leads were, can you paint my refrigerator? And... Uh, a lot of leads that equated to uh, Venter Hood installation, which we didn't do because on those Venter Hoods, a lot of them were in this area. They wanted to take one out or add one, which requires construction. And we didn't do that. So Home Advisor was a better, better lead generating magnet for me. And then I heard Miss Ward say about Thumbtack, so I picked up Thumbtack, and it really helped me because you know Thumbtack, I like the way they work for as their interface and me being able to call them without having to have a uh, number that's through a database. If you ever use Home Advisor, they give you a number to call, then you have to put in the code. I don't like that. But I do get a lot of leads from them. And, uh, and they're all within my defined area in Denton, for the most part. You know, Denton, Frisco, Prosper, Little Lamb. And I like that because they're very centralized in Plano. But uh, Thumbtack allowed me to contact the customers straight on directly. And I really, really like that a lot. I enjoyed that I could shoot them a text message. I could do whatever. And I liked having that, that, that interaction with the customer. But that was the third component to shifting my, my mindset. Now I'm on my, my, uh, my next transition here. And as I've been in the business and I started to see things, now I'm starting to see what's profitable. And that came through with the console called Miss Ward also, and also listening to her videos. 
find a niche in a niche in the business and or what you like and, and gravitate to it i'm one of those people that can like anything i don't really care you know if you give me wild ovens i pull out wild ovens and work them you give me microwaves i work on microwaves you give me um refrigerators i work on refrigerators i figure it out and i started to see people could deal without a washer they would go to the laundromat uh if the washer was working but the dryer wouldn't they would hang the clothes up and let them dry until you know they they felt like they were ready to pay the money to, to get it fixed uh, garbage disposal people would go without they they wouldn't use it uh, but <laughs> refrigerators i had a client that 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 told me hey I need my refrigerator fixed today. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll get over there. So when I got over there, she needed a start relay. And uh, I went to the appliance blue book and I think it was 342, I had the parts on the truck and uh, stayed with her, made sure it was cooling for her. It gave her that, that, that reassurance because our, all of our uh, diagnosis appointments are set for an hour or so stay with her about 45 minutes and uh, she told me it didn't matter what it cost long as it didn't cost as much as buying a new refrigerator because she waited a couple of days to call that's why she needed it fixed today if at all possible, because she had already tried to unplug it and let it reset and do this stuff on her own. And when it didn't work, she wanted it done. She wanted it fixed. And uh, like I said, she told me I could have charged her more than that 342 and she would have been happy to pay. And when I started looking at all the appliances, you know, if your oven go out, you can use your microwave. If your microwave go out, you can use your oven. If your refrigerator go out, you are stuck. And I, and you know, like that's that's the next evolution for me. Uh, I had already about three weeks ago took the the uh, EPA test. But what you a lot of times, if you don't know, you don't know. So I signed up for the EPA test, and uh, they gave me the core test, the whole test all three of the uh types not type one which i should have been taking i took type one type two and type three and uh, i signed up it was 70 dollars or 60 something it was something like that and i thought okay that's pretty cool for a test that's cheap in my mind to me that's cheap uh so all right pay for it i have to have a proctor i, I get a proctor i had to schedule it off three days I, I was getting it because I wanted to take it right away because I heard that you could have a it was an open book test so when I go to take this test it's 11 at night I'm thinking it was going to be like 30 minutes the test wound up I know I took it at 10 30 the test when I got everything going it was two hours and they gave this proctor she had me to pick up my computer, show everything around it, around, make sure I went, I didn't have any notes. I also heard that the type one was a open book test. So I did all these things and uh, <clears throat> for the proctor and I'm like, what the heck? <sighs> Excuse me. And I didn't, I, I did not know what I didn't know. So I took the core, which is all these classes. It's a closed book test. You have a proctor who's watching you and it's two hours long. So after a hard day, I'm taking a test at 1030 at night. That's two hours long and it's over stuff that I have no idea. It was dealing with chillers and, and uh, big manufacturers, uh, places, warehouses. Uh, dealing with uh, big walk-in units. And I, I had no idea. I didn't have any materials to study because I, I wasn't studying that. So make sure if you take that EPA test that you're taking only type, uh, the type one, and make sure 
that it's an open book test for you. Uh, you know, it's just things when you don't know, you don't know. Uh, so it's better that you, you have a mentor that you can ask. You have somebody that you talk to who might be just above you. Uh, they don't have to be uh, a master appliance tech. If they're just a step above you, they can tell you how to get up that step that they just came up. And I take that, and I, a lot of people take that from granted a lot of times, being like myself, a loner. You know, I don't need to talk to anybody. I'll figure it out and i pay for it. And these lessons are great. I can come back and, and, and talk to you about them and tell you. But if I had had someone that was close by that I could talk to, then it would have saved me in that that process, those two hours, that $70, all that, and I could have already had my EPA. So now I, I worked through and figured out where to take the EPA, this open books, 25 bucks. If I fail, this is $5 to retake it. These things are valuable in your time. And I go back and I, and I tell you this because you can save a lot of time by paying for a mentor. You know, buying one of these classes that are all inclusive and let you know what you don't know. They save you so much time. So first and foremost, if you've never been in appliance repair, I would advise you to take the ABC, the um, appliance boot camp class. It gives you everything you need to do know and it gets you off the ground. It gives you the stuff that you don't know that you don't know. After that, I would get going for about six months and then I would book a consult with Miss Ward. Uh, her her, her uh, YouTube is Solid Steps to Wealth. I think that's it. And uh, yeah, solid, solid Steps to Wealth. And she calls them the Solid Steppers. Okay. So I would do that. They, they have a lot of great... Uh, people online uh you need to get appliantology after you get appliance boot camp you need to uh, set up you some accounts for uh like marcone uh reliable day uh, my personal favorite is day it's better than marcone for its price um then comes reliable then marcone in dallas if you're in the dallas market marcone does not have a place you can pick up so everything you buy has to be shipped so everything has to be shipped to you so you can't pick up you can't do same day it's always next day but yeah get you some some vendors up under you <clears throat> after you get you some vendors up under you uh, make sure you're doing some continuing uh, continuous education classes you want to really get schematics down you really want to uh, find someone who can help you with the nuances of, of, of appliances you know so like if you know if you have a dishwasher you want to make sure when you go out there you know the uh, the key the key dance which uh, just putting it into diagnostic mode you know, if you go to a dishwasher and it's not draining, you know, that you want to, you know, the easiest way for me is to put it in drain and see if I hear something. Right after that, I'm going to take off the kick plate and I'm going to look and see if I uh, can get to that drain pump pretty easily. And I'm going to hook up my, my multimeter on there. One alligator clap here, one alligator clap here. I'm going to put it back in drain. Most times it's a start for three seconds to cancel to make it drain. And I'm going to see if I'm going to get 120 volts. You know, if I'm not getting 120 volts, then I know I have a problem somewhere up in the control board. If I am and it's not draining, I know I have a drain pump problem, some type of glass or clog. Or <clears throat> if it is trying to drain, then I need to look at my air gap, see if I have a clog in the air gap. I have had a clog in the air gap before. Uh, glass got up there, then it lodged food up there. It, would, it was trying to drain, but it couldn't continuously drain. It was stopping. So there's a lot of things like that that you, uh, you learn from your, your online classes and your mentors that will save you a lot of time 
and a lot of pain and frustration and, and, and a lot of money if you're not paying attention and doing this the right way. Uh, if you're going out jumping in CODs right away. So that mindset shift is what you need to have. And it's going to go in stages. You know, you're not going to go from making $10 an hour to making $100 an hour. I'm not keeping count, so you know you could be at 120, <laughs> but you you know you really have to uh, change your mindset. And there's a lot of audio books that'll help you, but the first thing you have to know that you can change, be willing to change, and be open to changing. And you have to see this stuff before you can receive it. You know, I'm not trying to be too esoteric on you, but you have to really understand that you can grasp this money and you can use this money as a tool to continuously go forward. But you're going to have to reinvest in yourself, reinvest in your education, reinvest in uh, all the tools that you need to to uh, to move forward in this appliance repair business. And it's not going to happen overnight. So, guys, with that said, if you have any questions, put them down in the comment section below. 